Yeah, I like that sound. <laughs> We're here today with Sunoco Sakai. I'm gonna brag for you. Oh, I think thank you. <laughs> one, of, one of the best, you know, a true expert in Japanese home cooking, I would say. Oh, thank you. And featuring your new cookbook, Japanese Home Cooking. How long have you considered yourself a teacher of Japanese cuisine, would you say? Well, I have to say that um, I'm more of a student than a teacher, okay. but um, I have been teaching for about 10 years. What are we making today? Um, so today we're making gyoza. And gyoza is a is a dumpling. Um, it's uh, something that we uh, learned from the Chinese, and we've kind of made it into our own. I mm -hmm. think, um, and it's a pan-fried dumpling with uh, a meat filling. But that's what we're doing today. So we have um, napa cabbage mm -hmm. and uh, some nida. This is a, a garlic chive. Okay. And if you don't. You could usually find this in any Asian market, but if you can't find it, you could use scallions okay. or onions even. Huh. And um, and then the ginger and there's garlic. Now, some people do not put garlic in the gyoza mm -hmm. or in, in dumplings. And uh, so this is just something that is optional. Okay, but, like uh, a personal preference. It's a per personal preference, yeah. but I love to put a lot of cabbage because it makes it crispy and uh, it makes it juicy, the gyoza juicy. Yeah. So um, let's just go start. You know. This is a nice uh, Napa cabbage. Mm. I'm just gonna cut it. So in the recipe, it depends on how much, um, how much meat you're gonna be using. Right, and we have about a pound of meat uh -huh. And that should make about 60 gyoza dumplings. Yeah. So, so this is good for if you want to sort of feed a group, have a party. Yes. That sort of and I like to use a white parts also because okay. that uh, gives it the crunch, right? Yeah. We could come back and make it even finer, but right now I'm just going to go through it. And I like the idea of what you said, adding cabbage to the filling uh -huh. makes it juicier. Yes. Because the pork is going to have its own juiciness, but right. the cabbage even makes it that much more... Yes, juicy and also <laughs> it, umami and sweetness. Yeah. And I'm looking for a little sweetness, umami, also saltiness, right? Because yeah. it has some salt and soy sauce in it. And the, the sesame oil will also give it some fragrance. Mm -hmm. Uh, sake will just make you happy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the ginger will give it the spiciness. Mm -hmm. So we're actually looking for the five uh, flavors. And I talk about that in my cookbook. Yeah. About five flavors, uh, five colors, you know, to awaken all your senses. But n no, no single um, ingredient should really overwhelm too much. Right. So I don't like a dumpling that has too much garlic. Right. Or it's super spicy. And um, sometimes I find, like my students come to my dumpling class and I see them like putting tons of garlic in and I'm going, whoa, yeah. you know? I remember that lesson as a young cook where you think like, well, if two cloves is good, then five yeah. cloves must be better, but yeah. it's not always true. Yeah. You're looking for balance more than yeah, yeah. aggressiveness. I think so. Okay, so I'm using like three or four cups of, and this is gonna let you get started. Yeah. yeah. So you're just standing there. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta put me to work. Yeah, I'm gonna put you to work. And where's the salt? Let's yeah. see. And I'll continue with the chopping. So this cabbage gets salted, and the salt is gonna draw some of the moisture out yes. of the cabbage. Yeah, it's gonna draw out the excess um, moisture and, right. and give it flavor, but you don't wanna over salt it. I see. So just. Um, uh, you do just a pinch or two of yeah, salt. Yeah, do a pinch or two and start massaging it. Sure. Okay. And I mean, I think we should have done it all at once, but um, just to get I it needed started. a job. Yeah, I needed to put <laughs> you to work. Do you remember when you first became passionate about Japanese cooking? Um, I think the most mesmerizing experience I had mm -hmm. as a young cook is watching my grandma make rice, oh, wow. cook rice. Yeah. Because rice is so fundamental in our culture. And mm -hmm. by the way, rice is Gyoza is always served with rice. It's mm. like starch and starch, but um, we it, like to eat everything with rice. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, so my childhood memories, yes, um, making uh, making rice, watching my grandmother rinse rice was very uh, beautiful experience because yeah. she would cook the rice on a uh, in the living room on a on a uh, on a stove top. Yeah. And then she would tell me stories. Wow. And the storytelling part is is just part of my 
the way I fell in love with food mm. is because it was time I spent in the kitchen with my grandma, yeah. right? And, yeah. Or my mother. Uh, so my grandmother didn't do dumplings. Dumplings is a Chinese dish, right? Huh. My mother was the one that did dumplings. And, and because she had so many little hands, little helpers, oh, right. we got to always do something with her in the kitchen. Yeah. So this is good, but I, um, so see all this water that you could see? Yeah, wow. Yeah, so let's uh, get rid of that water. Okay. There's so much moisture. Yeah. So when you add a little bit of salt, it's just... So this is an important step. If you didn't squeeze out that moisture, all that would be too much liquid in your Yeah, dumpling. it gets kind of soggy. Yeah. Yeah. I like Napa cabbage in my gyoza, mm -hmm. but you could do this with cabbage too. Cabbage is really good. So we finished massaging the cabbage. We squeezed all the water out. We did it in two batches just to give me a job. When you're working at home, you could do it all at once. <laughs> yeah. Next step, I guess, is the garlic chives. Yes, we have the garlic chives. And um, so while I chop this, maybe you could start peeling the ginger. Sure. So here's the garlic chive. The ends, um, you want to trim them off because they're, they're um, hard. Just chop it. Sometimes what I do is uh, when I want uh, the ginger to be softer, I just huh. soak it yeah, in water and it softens it. So that's a nice trick to have. Uh, garlic is not really something that was part of our culture. And even though we're very close to China and Korea, hmm. Japanese people didn't really cook with garlic much. And even in the older, the kaiseki cuisines, you don't see that. Um, but the modern palate has changed, and, and gyoza. So again, my mother would never put garlic in any of her cooking. Huh. Yeah. But because it's such a powerful flavor? It's too powerful. It's too overwhelming. Yeah. And uh, interesting enough, I, my daughter-in-law is Chinese. And she, for certain dumplings, she, her mother does not use garlic. Interesting. So, But ginger, yes. OK, so I think we've done everything we need to do as far as ch chopping this. We just need to chop that. Let's just chop that, that ginger. Sure. OK. So uh, you could see that there's uh, some prep involved, but once you do this prep, you could keep the gyoza um, meat yeah. in the fridge for a couple days. This is great. So you yeah. put in the hard work. You yeah. can make the filling yeah. a couple days ahead of time yeah. and then invite people over yeah. to wrap the dumpling. Right. So um, it looks like a lot of work, but um, this is uh, a really good party food. Do you ever get very creative with the fillings and go outside the box with mm, non-traditional Ingredients? Oh yes, yes. So um, I do. I have done uh, gluten-free uh, wrappers with like millet flour oh. and you know rice flour. Yeah. I've done kale, spinach, yeah. shiitake mushrooms for vegan people. Yeah. There is really no rule. What I do is I go into my fridge mm -hmm. and I look at okay, what I do I need to get rid of? Yeah. That <laughs> cabbage's been sitting there for a while. It's starting to look kind of sad. Yeah. But maybe I could rescue it, right? Yeah, yeah. Carrots. Um, potatoes, sweet potatoes. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, don't don't you don't have to stick to the vegetables in my in my my book. Mm -hmm. But ginger, I think ginger and scallions and the cabbage is always nice to to have. Yeah. But if you don't have the cabbage, use kale or I would not use lettuce though. Right. L lettuce is a little bit. Um, it's kind of watery. It's wimpy. W a wimpy, yeah. <laughs> a wimpy Wimpy's a, yeah, a wimpy vegetable. I'd rather <laughs> eat that raw, right? Yeah. In yeah. a salad. For the folks at home, if you like getting creative with your dumpling filling, leave a comment. I want to hear what you put in your dumplings. Yeah. And <laughs> that would be a fun, fun uh, exercise, right? Yeah. yeah. We have our ground pork, garlic chives, ginger, minced garlic, cabbage. Time to mix it all together. Yes, okay. There's a few more ingredients we're gonna add, actually. Right, so uh, let me just go ahead and add the... Yeah, dump it in. Dump it in. So here we have a nice combination. You know, I just noticed that there's still some water coming out. See? Oh, yeah. Ooh. While it sat there. Right, the salt kept working. Yeah, the salt kept working. So this is a good place where you don't... You wanna add the broth, but you, want, you don't want too much of this soggy water. Right. So. So this was soggy water, so maybe you don't need all of the broth. You see, see, this is where you make a little adjustment, but the broth is going to add flavor. I'm just gonna, this is, instead of a half a cup, I'm just doing a quarter cup, and I'm, it's gonna be a feel. Yeah, okay? yeah. 
That's yeah. honest cooking, you know. Yeah. I think a recipe has to yeah. be more like a guideline. You can't yeah. always be yeah. 100% literal right. about it. Right, and this is actually comes with uh, practice a little bit. Yeah. And you're going to taste your gyoza and say, oh, this was a little bit dry. Maybe next time I'm going to add uh, a little bit more of the broth. Right. Right. This is uh, sesame oil to give it a little bit more umami. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the, the five principles that I was talking about. There's there's amami, which is the sweetness, mm -hmm. and this the is the cabbage. umami from the, the pork. Yeah. These greens, some of it, it, it depends, maybe a little bitterness, right? Yeah. From, yeah. The, from the garlic chives. Maybe. From the garlic chives yeah. and spiciness from the ginger mm -hmm. and, the, and the garlic. So we're pretty much covered in terms of flavors. Right. And even colors, right? Uh, we don't have red in here. Mm. Yeah, but that's gonna come later with the chili. Okay. So uh, I'll add a little bit of, yeah, a t two teaspoons, yeah? Two so, teaspoons. Yeah, right. yeah. So that was about yeah, right. Yeah, that, that was about right. And then a little soy sauce. Um, now there's all kinds of soy sauce uh, when it comes to soy sauce. Mm -hmm. Just the regular dark soy sauce, Japanese soy sauce is what I usually use. Mm -hmm. you know. And um, you don't want to make your dumplings too salty. Right. Because the seasoning is at the table. One tablespoon of soy sauce, that's okay. it. But you always want to have a little sake. You know? <laughs> so a little. A little sake goes in here. And this is, again, a tenderizer and also gives it a mami. A, a mami sweetness. sweetness. Yeah. So now we're ready to massage. Sure. So do you want to be in charge of that? Sure. Yeah. Now, okay. once everything is mixed together, yeah. will you take a little piece of the raw filling and fry it off just to taste it to see that you like the taste of it? Or do you just go ahead and start filling it? Yeah, that's a good idea, up? actually. I think it's yeah. a nice idea for home cooks. Yeah. If you're doing dumplings or even yeah. if you're doing meatballs yeah. at home, take a little piece of the raw meat filling yeah. and fry it off and taste it. And that way you can adjust the seasoning before you commit to making 60 dumplings or 100 meatballs or whatever yeah. you're about to do. Yeah, that's a really good idea. Can I just? Yeah, please. So it's like a real massage. Uh, so you're like kneading it, it, it in yeah, almost. Knead it, yeah. And I know that I don't need to add any more um, liquid in this because it feels pretty it feels wet. Pretty wet. Yeah. If anything, maybe I, I would have done a little less broth. But um, I don't know if you've tasted these um, Din Tang Fang Chinese dumplings that when you bite into it, the juice pops. The yes. Juice, and it's so hot that you have to eat it with a spoon. Oh, wow. Well, this is that juiciness, right? But when you're... That might be nice. Yeah, nice. yeah, it's nice. But <laughs> when you're folding the dumplings, you have to do it really fast and fry it right away. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the wrappers will get soggy. Ah. So this is the thing is um, you see like at, at uh, these frozen dumplings. Yeah. And you just go straight to the, the, the pan with them. Yeah. When you're making fresh dumplings, mm -hmm. you don't want the dumplings to be sitting there, right, like in the, the fridge. Right, the wrapper will get soggy. Yeah, and yeah. it won't taste that good. Can you fill the gyoza and then freeze them and cook them later that way? I mean, you could. Or you'd yeah. rather Yeah, I just rather, and yeah. Them. And when I do that, I actually drop it in a broth yeah. and turn them into wonton soups. Oh, cool. Yeah. But when they're for, frozen. When they're frozen, yeah. yeah. But for, for frying, I want them to be fresh. Yeah. So see, it's not as wet now because it's... Right, it almost it. Uh, emulsified. Yeah. You're right, it's a different texture. It, it is, right? Yeah. It smells nice. Now in your book, uh, before you start to work with a filling, you have it rest for a little while? In a yeah, bunch. I do, because it, it has a chance to absorb the flavors. I see. Yeah. Remember I said that uh, when I don't feel like cooking, I make gyoza? Mm -hmm. Like I just go and see what scraps I have in the, and just put it on. I don't let it rest. So okay. th this so you is you can work with it. Yeah, right oh, definitely. I'm just, you know, if you want to really impress your friends, maybe you should rest it, but yeah. it's going to be fine either, you know, either way it's going to yeah. be pretty That's good. Yeah. That's good advice to home cook. Yeah. You yeah. know, work with it right away yeah. or yeah. if it rests in the fridge, the flavor's only going to grow. Yeah. Massage it for a little while and see how the fat has emulsified mm. and it's become stickier. Yeah. And it's going to be easier for you to handle when you're wrapping. So the texture looks beautiful. Yeah. We almost forgot the salt. Yeah, okay, let's add. A couple, add, uh, yeah. two teaspoons. Yeah, and you know what, I always start, you start know, with one, and one see and yeah, see how it tastes. Yeah. I think one, maybe one is good. Sure. 
So we have a board to work on. Yes. We split our filling in half, so you have a little station and I have a little workstation. A bowl with water is going to help us to fold the wrappers. Yeah. And then I want to talk about the wrappers themselves. Right. Because there's different brands, there's different styles. Right. For gyoza, you want to use round wrappers, mm -hmm. and they could come in thick and thin um, sizes. So this is a right. matter of preference. Yeah. But I um, like them on the thin side. Yeah. And and big if possible. <laughs> um, this is actually a really good size. It's very standard huh. and um, fresh. But don't use the square ones. The square ones are for shumai, uh, and the round ones are for gyoza. So what's the first step here? Okay, so let's lay out, uh, lay out um, the wrappers on a dry cutting board. Mm -hmm. Let's make some rows here. Sure. So what you're going to do is you're going to take um, <clears throat> about a teaspoon. Not quite a tablespoon, but yeah. Yeah, and if if you overstuff them, you're going to break your wrapper. So, yeah. but if you understaff them, they're going to stuff them. They're not going to. They won't be as delicious. No. So it's <laughs> takes a little practice. Yeah. But line them up and see. You yours is a little bit smaller than mine, which is a good place to start. So I I felt like as a beginner, I yeah. didn't want to overstuff them and, yeah. and break them. Okay. But. When you're working at home, do you always use this technique where you lay out a bunch of wrappers? Always, and fill them yeah, all always, yeah. It's faster than doing one at a time. Right? Oh yeah, you don't do one at a time. What you want to do is um, wet the upper part. This okay. is how I do it: sure. wet the upper part, and the wrapping is one at a time. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you're gonna hold it in your left hand mm -hmm. and or right hand if you're left-handed, and then you're just gonna pinch the top like this. Pinch it. And then we're going to start making some folds. Right. Now, if you are not comfortable with folding, mm -hmm. this could be it. You just pinch the whole way along. This could be your dumpling, like this. You leave it open like this. On the you ends. could you could leave it open and fry it like this if you like, huh. or um, you could just do. So the pinch once to do the folds. Yeah. You could do one to three folds. Okay. So you're going to hold it like th hold it. <laughs> and then I'm going to fold it towards the center yeah. and pinch with my left thumb. And then fold it again. And I, I, do, I like to do three. Okay. And some of the meat might come out, but just kind of clean it up. Sure. And then once you finish the left side, then you work on the, the right side, then you work on the left side. So again, you want to make sure there's some water here, mm. right? And then you fold it towards the center. One, two, and three. See? Like that. And you gave a little bit of water on the outside to help those folds stick. Yes. And uh, don't worry if a little bit of the meat comes out. That's when you know you have to adjust how much filling you have to put. And then you line it up. You have to pinch it. And depending on the freshness of the, of the dumpling uh, wrapper, mm -hmm. it may not want to hold together. So you have to make sure that you add a little water and pinch it. So that's your first dumpling. Let's see how it I did one side already. Okay. One, do, two, three. Yeah. Do the other side. So you hold it in the center and, and you bring it, it toward towards the middle. It. Yeah. One, two, and three. Yeah. And then fold, then give it, yeah. There, there we go. Beautiful. I feel pretty good about this. Yeah. You, beautiful. <laughs> okay. Then put it here. While you're working with these. Yeah. Would you want to cover up your stack of Oh yeah, see it's how it's wrappers. starting to curl. Yeah. So what I'd like you to do is actually keep them in the bag uh, or put a, a, a cloth on top. Right. Yeah. So. Because the longer it's exposed to the air, the drier it will get. Yeah, definitely. Um, and some people will pleat it all in one direction. Right. Yeah. And uh, that's just a personal thing. You could even play with that if you'd like to try that. I like the way you taught me just now, holding really? it in the center yeah. Yeah, and folding it yeah. toward the middle. I find yeah. that easier. The other times I've tried to make dumplings and yeah. I try to fold it all in one direction, yeah. I start with big folds and then they get smaller and smaller as I run out of room on yeah, the top. Yeah, I, I, I could never do that really well. <laughs> so here we go. So I just wet the top half of this dumpling and I'm going to fold it and pinch the center like that. And then I'm going to wet the front half of my 
dumpling wrapper and then hold it with my left hand and then I'm going to use my right hand to pleat it. That's one pleat, that's two pleat, and this is the third pleat. And then you pinch it. See, so this is pleated on one side and then we will hold the pleat, pleated side and then pleat the left side. Left side is a little trickier if you're not left-handed. But and you gather it up and you have a dumpling. So we folded our dumplings. Yes. I like that mine and yours are pretty mixed in there. You can't quite tell. Oh, I know. You I did. Feel, I feel pretty you good. You are good. <laughs> I know, they uh, look uh, very nice, I think. Yeah. yeah. So what we're gonna do mm -hmm. is a little bit of oil in a nonstick skillet. These get seared first, and then we add water and we steam them. Right, okay, so let's just add some oil. And you wanna make sure that the pan is nicely heated. Oh, yeah, it's smoking already, so. And, when we're searing the dumplings, you don't want to burn them. So right. if you see too much smoke coming out, bring it to the side and just let it cool off a little bit. Right. right? Yeah. Yeah. See, it's sizzling a yeah. little bit, so that's good. And if you notice that in areas that there's not enough oil, mm -hmm. I'm just kind of moving it around. So I like that. You're taking the gyoza and dragging it through the oil. Yeah. Yes. Just so that you get that crispy bottom. Mm -hmm. um, and then you push it. So at this stage, it's not that hot, right? And it's still dry on the top, so you could use your fingers right. and not burn yourself. Now, when you cook gyoza, you like to pretty much fill the skillet. You don't have there be very much empty space in the pan. Right. Just a little bit, you know? Yeah. If it's too snug, then they will, you'll have areas that are not cooked thoroughly. So. Right. Um, so like a single even layer, basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's see how many we could get in this. Mm -hmm. So you notice that I'm like looking at the first one that I put in to yeah. make sure that these are not cooking too fast. Right. And, and you need to work pretty quickly yeah. to make sure that yeah. they all are in the pan. Yeah. Okay. So let's just see how this one is doing. See, this one is nearly ready. Right. See? Uh, sort of a medium golden. Yeah. So I and I. And so you like to get it pretty dark. Yeah, I like to get it pretty dark, just but not burnt. Just before it burns. Yeah, yeah, just before it burns. So these need a little bit more. Maybe yeah. raise it just one notch. Sure. And I noticed that the side on the right could use a little oil. See how oh, okay. dry it is? Yeah. So let's just Should just we add a, a touch more. Yeah, touch more on the side. Sure. And that will help it cook faster too. Yeah, there we go. Right, because you want to be able to hear that sizzle. See, now we're hearing it. It's right? interesting. If, yeah. if there's no sound, then your pan is too dry. Maybe. Yeah, right. Yeah, I like that sound. <laughs> Okay, it's, yeah. it's happier now. But if you put too much, oh, see, this is happy. Because yeah. that's, they're in the middle. Yeah. And you could also do is. Oh, right. Move the middle yeah, to the outside. Yeah, but if you touch them too much, they might fall apart. But yeah, now they're all happy. They're all happy. And I think I'm almost ready to add the, do you want to check one? Let's see. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's nice color. Yeah, pretty nice, right? Okay. So right at the moment when you feel like they're nice and golden brown on the yeah, bottom, yeah. we're going to add our water. Yeah. And you sit about a third of the way up on to, yes. the, to the dumplings. Uh huh. Because everyone's skillet is different and yeah. you've added a different amount yeah, of dumplings. Yeah, so this so. one needs a little bit more. You right. See? Yeah, so go ahead. And have a lid next to it. you got to put the lid right away. Yeah. Otherwise, you're going to have a lot of splashing around and right. people get, get burnt. So. Uh -huh. The lid is important too because we we're steaming the top of these. Yes. That's how to make sure that they're fully cooked. Right. And then you could have a, you could just relax. Yeah, now's the time to drink the rest of the sake. Yeah, <laughs> where is it? <laughs> While the gyoza are cooking, we're gonna make a little dipping sauce. Right, um, so usually you just give the individual yeah. plates and you just let them do the Seasoning. Uh, so each but, person makes their yeah, own dipping But sauce. I, if they've never done it before, I guide them. Mm -hmm. And you could do a little bit of soy sauce. And this is layu. Layu is uh, chili oil, and it's got, uh, it's pretty, pretty spicy. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have a recipe for chili, this layu in my cookbook. Oh, cool. 
Um, see, that's all you Just need. a few drops. Yeah. yeah, and this is hot. Okay. And then a little vinegar is nice, like black vinegar. Yeah. Or you could just do lemon. Okay. And I, I like to just wait until, you know, I get the gyoza. But there, there's your sauce. Oh, And you easy. let the, the diners just do their mixing yeah. and eat it. And I like that. So if you wanted a little bit more spicy, more chili. Oh, yeah. If you like the acid, you put more lemon. Yeah, yeah. Make but it your own. Yeah, so make it your own. And you have? Yes, this is a, a ginger. Yeah. Pickled ginger, amaza ginger. You see this, This it's also called gari. You see this at the sushi, sushi bars. Yeah. This is a mild one. I just thought it would be really nice with the gyoza. Yeah. Any, any kind of pickle would be nice. Ah, see, almost all of it yeah. has evaporated. I could hear the sound change, and yeah. that indicated to me that yeah. the, they were almost ready. So what you do is you just this was the the side that we the row that we put in last. So mm. these are the ones that would be cooked, right? right? More or less. So now what we want to do is bring up the heat a little bit. Well, it's pretty high. It's yeah. like seven. So now I want to dry it. Right. You're yeah. going to wait until the water is completely evaporated. Mm -hmm. And then that re-crisps the bottom, right. would you say? And sometimes I add a little bit of oil okay. to give it that the extra, uh, extra, bit. extra bit of uh, sizzle and umami. Yeah. Uh, but let's see how it goes. Sure. Sometimes the pork is so fatty that oh, it doesn't need it. It releases its own right, fat. Right, right. Yeah. These look very good. These, they do, don't they? <laughs> so you should do more than 30 dumplings, right? You should do 60. Right, because the, the first batch is always the toughest, right? Yeah, it's always After the toughest. After you get the first batch done, yeah. then it becomes easier. A little bit easier, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's why I told you the first batch is for the family. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Second batch is for your guests. Yeah. But it doesn't usually work that way. Okay, let's see if I could get these off. It seems like when you work from the side of this pan, it's much better. I think that if you let it dry a little bit, it's going to be easier. Right. Mm -hmm. See, this is coming off now. Yeah. Yeah, so. That looks great. It should be okay. Should be. See? Yeah, those are beautiful. Yeah. Those are perfect. See, I told you this. Wow. Once the, the pan gets seasoned, it's yeah. much better. See? Oops, this one broke, but. It's okay. Do, do you want to try um, getting it out Scoop of the. Scoop sure. Yeah. I think at this point. Maybe easier. Easier yeah. for this one, so. Just really work on the bottom part and, yeah, kind of scrape it off, right? Yeah. And Yeah, there we go. Beautiful. Oh, yeah. Yeah, these came out really nice. Now, you were saying that you like to just sort of make a mountain of dumplings when you <laughs> yeah. serve them at home. Yeah. That you're not too precious about it. You oh, just yeah, I don't like rows. Let it, it's like let when it fall I go to a, a ramen shop or something and yeah. they, they, you order grills and you get these five little dinky <laughs> gyozas and I go, my husband says, I like your gyoza better. <laughs> You're just piled up in, a, yeah. in one big mess. Well, you know? a, a mountain of gyoza yeah. is better than five little cute ones. Right? So, <laughs> five little precious ones. Right. right? So, he, he really likes my gyoza. And you could see, he, between the two of us, we will eat a whole plate like this. Wow. Yeah. You're, you're living a great life. Yeah, I do. <laughs> With just whatever I find in the, in the fridge, right? Yeah. Yeah, so. It really uh, is probably the most entertaining uh, These are beautiful. dish that you could have uh, instantly, I think. Here we go. Okay, I get to taste the first dumpling. Mm. Let's see. So what I do is I put the soy sauce and then a little bit of chili oil mm -hmm. and, um, and some, a little bit of lemon juice. Right. And then eat it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's going to be hot. So yeah. So don't just put it in your mouth, but take a take bite. Take a little bite first. Yeah. Mm, it's hot. See? Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> mm, it's so good. Mm. I love how crispy these were able to get. Yeah, right? It's almost counterintuitive. You think by adding the water that it would make them soggy. Mm -hmm. But once the water evaporates and they're fully cooked, they really mm -hmm. do crisp back mm -hmm. up. It's really nice. Mm -hmm. Did you put a little lemon? Mm. These are so good. Good? Yeah. I mean, what's better than a freshly made homemade dumpling? This <laughs> is very good. Right? Mm -hmm. 
and really it's best to gather around the kitchen, mm -hmm. you know, and just eat it right off the, out of the pan, mm -hmm. then letting it, letting it sit. Right, you don't want these to even get to room temperature, really. No, they should be no. eaten yeah, right, right away. away. Thank you so much for Thank coming in so the kitchen. Thank you so much. This was I a lot really of fun. enjoyed making dumplings with um, you. You know, I came into this feeling, you asked me off camera, you said, you know, how confident do you feel making dumplings? And I said, not that confident. I hadn't done it very much. Um, but this was so easy. I think any home cook should feel confident. Yeah. Give it a try. It's not that hard. And it's so much fun. I hope you try it. Thank you so much. Yeah.